I can remember the lesson in which imaginary numbers were introduced. And you can feel half of the class just falling away and just say, I cannot go here. It doesn't make sense. And so much of maths and what you do to make it palatable to people early on is you give real examples and all of a sudden you can't and you're forced to work in a completely abstract sense. And personally, I just sort of thought, cool, this is exciting, this is really weird. Comedian and closet mathematician Dave Gorman was clearly seduced by the allure of imaginary numbers. But, as he pointed out, not everybody shares his passion. And you may well be one of those people that wonders what all the fuss is about. If that's the case, then over the next few minutes I hope to persuade you that, as the 17th century mathematician Leibniz put it, The imaginary number is a fine and wonderful recourse to the divine spirit, almost an amphibian between being and not being. So let's start with the basics. What is an imaginary number and where does it come from? Mathematician Ron Knott. If I ask you what number, when I multiply it by itself, gives you nine... Right, that's three. Okay. Three there's times a, three there's is nine. There's actually another number as well, isn't there? Oh, negative three. That's it, yes. There are two of them then that solve that. Okay, but if I ask which number, when I square it, gives you minus nine? Okay. Well, it's obviously not three, because three times three is nine, and it's obviously not negative three, because negative three times negative three is nine. So we're trying to find a number which, when multiplied by itself, gives something negative. Well, we can't do it. So Ron is asking me a question that doesn't have an answer, which seems a little unfair to say the least. In fact, the only way out is to invent a new number. We could invent a quantity called the square root of minus 1, which we write as an i, i standing for imaginary. Then what number, when squared, gives me minus 9? It will actually be 3 times this i. 3 times 3 gives the 9, and the i times the i gives the minus 1. i is the square root of minus 1. I think it is true that the square root of minus one somehow does distinguish the tigers from the boys. If you've got what it takes to admit this new number into your life and actually saying, OK, there may be more numbers than just the numbers we see as measurements on a ruler, that power to accept new concepts is very much part of being a mathematician and making those creative leaps. You really can't believe that the number wasn't there all along. That was number theorist Marcus de Sotoy persuading us to have faith in this new imaginary number. And that faith is crucial. As maths historian Robin Wilson explains, unless you accept imaginary numbers, then there are some equations that simply can't be solved. How about the equation x squared equals minus 1? With all the numbers that we've got so far, we can't solve that. Because if you square a positive number or a negative number, you get something positive. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. What? When you square it, it gives you minus 1. There is no real number which has that property. So either you say these equations can't be solved, and that's what the Islamic scholars did and the Babylonians when they did quadratic equations, or else you introduce a new type of number which will then enable you to solve that equation, x squared equals minus 1, by introducing this new idea of a number which is the square root of minus 1. There's a lot of mysticism about these imaginary numbers. Are they numbers? You could actually play around with them even if you didn't understand them. It might seem bizarre to have an imaginary number, but in a way it's no more strange than a negative number. As Ian Stewart of Warwick University explains, you can't really have a negative sheep, yet mathematically it's a valid concept. If you have a field with minus one sheep you can tell because when you put a sheep in it you end up with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of anti-sheep that uh, annihilates the sheep you add. It doesn't make sense in physical terms, but nonetheless negative numbers are very useful for all sorts of reasons. You can put them into the calculation, do the calculation using them, get to the end and the negative numbers have disappeared, and get the correct answer. Now later on, things like the banking system start to realise, look, you can interpret a negative number. It's not quite a physical thing, it's a debt. Historically, there always seems to be a struggle to get a, a new extension of the number concept accepted as genuine numbers. And even the terminology shows this. Imaginary numbers for square roots, imaginary, it's not real. And we still today talk of real and imaginary numbers, but we don't actually mean real in the physical sense and imaginary in the mental constructs. They're all mental constructs. So there's a struggle. 